getting ready for the 2020 camping season. Here's my trailer in its current state. I'm gonna walk through what's changed since last video. And then I'll talk about the things I hope to get updated for this year. So the inside of the door has been stained. Ah, turned out okay, it's a little dirty right now. In hindsight, probably would have just painted it with a lighter color paint, but uh, it works all right. The table that was here before has been converted into a built-in desk. It's the same metal structure underneath. Um, there's just no gap in the back and it's attached all the way across. Um, we've got this little pop-up power strip with USB and AC. And what that let me do is put this plywood panel here and then we've got uh, controls for lights. So we've got uh, one set of lights right there and then another set running down the length. Uh, as well as a fan and then I've got three extras we also have a set of USB ports here and a 12 volt over here that apparently is really well attached hey there it is so obviously I haven't used that one a whole lot but uh, helpful little panel those are available on Amazon I'll throw a link at the end of this all the stuff that's available but uh built-in desk has been nice and then right above it it's a built-in plywood shelf so three quarter inch plywood it's painted this kind of light blue color underneath same as the walls here and just put a face board on it and it's just a few inches deep you can see the plywood's right about here and there's room for four of these action packers fit in there nice and tight and they don't slide around they stay put and then i'll usually put soft goods up top you can see that i started staining the ceiling and really didn't like how it turned out at all uh probably a good thing since dark colors in small space are not so great so hopefully we'll paint that white this year well we're already looking up this was the big addition last year is putting in a powered fan so we've got a vent portal and then an adjustable fan goes both directions and has variable speeds so that was another amazon purchase that does a great job of helping get all the air out of there otherwise the only venting in this trailer is the passenger venting when you're driving and there's a hole down there in the front and then another in the back so you get some air blowing through when you're driving the cheapest upgrade i think it's one of my favorites is these little ikea bathroom hooks they stick out about an inch and a half. There's just a little bit of a lip on them. And uh, they're nice and round and you can bump into them and they won't really cut you up or knock into anything. But for storing a headlamp or towel or hooded sweatshirt or just, just whatever, um, these are great. So I have a few of these stashed all over. There's a couple here on this wall. There's one over here holding the first aid kit. And then there's a couple in the back because that's usually where our heads are when we have either an air mattress or cots. And so it's nice to be able to hang up your headlamp in the back and just know where that is at all time. Uh, also out of this floor, which is kind of dirty, a little gross, but uh, turned out all right. This is a laminate, it's a peel and stick floor. It's very inexpensive. It was like $75 for enough for the entire trailer and a couple extra pieces. Um, it's held up pretty well. With uh, the plywood heating and cooling, it'll occasionally lift a little bit. And so right now I've got some E-Trex, this e tracks sitting on top of it just to anchor it down right by the doorway there. But that's done a very nice job. Feels a lot more finished than just the plywood floor and it stays a little bit cleaner in here when I actually cleaned it up. Uh, this rug is usually sitting in here for transporting bikes. And I have the E-Tracks along the bottom on each side, which make tying down bikes nice and easy. And the other thing that I was trying out last year that was kind of thrown together is I used these joist hangers and this square tube and just made this quick little loft um, with just these bars on each side. And so I have a kayak sitting in here, but uh, I think 
I'm gonna work something out where that's a little bit more of a fixture this year, just for extra storage, because there's plenty of height to get under here and get the bikes all situated. And it really makes loading up nice and easy for things like duffel bags and uh, the paddle board. Um, we also use cots sometimes when we're not using an air mattress and cots are kind of awkward shaped. So I'll fit in that little loft area nice. So that's, that's on the to-do list. Um, uh, see what else is new. Well, we've got this guitar hanger, which those are pretty common if you're into guitars, but it's just nice to be able to bring one with and then it's out of the way. It's not laying around when you're not using it. Uh, I don't keep that in here all the time. It's just hanging out right now while I'm getting everything cleaned up. And we have a little 32 inch TV. This is just a inexpensive you know, department store probably purchases it like a Target or on Amazon, something like that. And, uh, that's just nice to have extra screen along with uh, plug in a Nintendo Switch or you know whatever video player, computer, whatever you want. And it's big enough where you can easily watch it from the other side of the trailer laying down. Um, also, we have a little remote control for that and a sleep timer, whatever. So, power wise, there's a 12 volt DC system. That's the same as the last time I did this update. Um, 12 volt DC system is just a, a marine deep cycle battery that's kind of messy it's back here and then there's an inverter and an Optima charger so right now it's plugged in on shore power and so we're charging the deep cycle that we can flip it over run on an inverter this is a little bit ad hoc this isn't wired nearly as nice as an actual RV um, with a shore power switch so that might also be on the to-do list as well this year is clean up that wiring and, and make it a little bit more professional and safe and not just thrown in there. Uh, additionally, I would like to be able to support a solar panel and a controller at some point, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, the other thing I don't think I featured in the last video is this net. And this is a toy hauler screen that my wife just resized. Just a little bit of customization. I'll walk around and see it from the back. And here's all the soft goods that I think we can store up in that loft area. It's extra sleeping bags and ground pads, stove, things like that. But this guy works out real well because you get another entrance point. It's kind of hard to work the zipper one-handed. Um, this guy works out real well. You get another entrance point, and it zips and unzips, and then it Velcros all the way around. And then what we did is cut these little access loops, these slits so that we can close the trailer. So a lot of times we'll close the gate almost all the way and then have a little airflow through the back, but then there's a nice screen there so we're not getting a ton of bugs in the trailer. Works really well. Um, I think that was another Amazon purchase and I can probably link to that as well. So that's kind of the status quo. That's where we're at. If you have any questions about this build, I'm trying to answer anything I can. What I've learned so far is when I purchased this trailer, the footprint was exactly the size I wanted. I think we're 12 feet deep and six and a half feet tall. Uh, I'm about 6'2", and so being able to walk around in there is, is fantastic, having that extra height. Um, the downside of a trailer that is 6'6", six six and sitting up on an axle, is it's very tall. So it's it's about 8.5 feet to the top there, and you can, you can see by all the, the road warriors there that uh, picks up a lot of little rocks and chips and bugs and stuff. Um, so it's not super efficient to tend on the road. But uh, it is very comfortable to stay in. Uh, additionally, I might add some jacks to the front to level it out in the front corner, in the corner left and corner right here. So right now, the way that it's sitting, it's pretty stable this way. But if you're you've got two adults kind of walking around in there, getting dressed, whatever, you can you can feel it move around, especially if the ground's soft. So. Might put a couple of jacks in the corners. Um, that extra E-Tracks, 
I also might mount a little bit higher on the far side and then be able to put bikes in there on the diagonal. So the cargo limit for this is, is around 1,500 pounds. So a couple of bikes and all the gear, no problem whatsoever, but we were definitely pushing the cargo limit with the side-by-side -side and, and you really felt it both towing and braking. So this is a lot more fun with just the dirt bikes and then a you know, paddle board and kayak, things like that. Um, staying within the weight limits, absolutely the way to go. So anybody thinking about doing this with a, a cargo trailer, I would think real hard about how much stuff you're going to want to load up inside your cargo trailer and what all that weight's going to look like, especially if you're doing fixtures. Um, we don't haul around any form of plumbing. Uh, I usually camp somewhere where there's either a pit toilet or, you know, showers nearby. So, so we don't set up really any plumbing outside of maybe a couple gallons of water. And, uh, and then I have a Yeti cooler that fits in this space real nice here. Um, so if you're thinking about building something out, you're going to add, you know, fresh water and, uh, and then either gray water or black water. It starts to add weight quite a bit. Uh, I think if I was to do this project over, I'd probably jump right to a trailer with uh, two axles and, uh, and electronic brakes. Just gives you a lot more headroom for weight. Um, but, you know, I've had this trailer for five years. It's a, it's a great little trailer. It's been a lot of fun to build out. And uh, kind of talk about some of the things I'd like to do with it now. So my wife is 5'6", and uh, this this is about 20 inches, and so her, her biggest wish list item is a step. And I spent a bunch of time looking at all the different RV steps and trailer steps you could mount, and they flip in and bolt to this, and I looked at a bunch of different options, and then I decided to buy one that's just like a little step stool. So easy solution there. Um, that's That's been ordered. That's on its way. Once again, I'll link to that the end of this here um so no no big engineering feat there i think i'd like to build out tables or a surface that go from this beam to the other one and, and just create this as sort of a shelf for a tray um and i'll probably do two different little tables so this is about five feet wide um, so we'll do maybe 24 inches and 24 inches, the space in between. Um, cause I don't always take this big kayak with, but I do store the kayak in here when I'm not using it just cause it is kind of clunky and kind of in the way. So it doesn't come with on every single trip, but it does live in the trailer. Um, and, and that storage shelf would be nice. So my idea is if I had something I could take while I'm transporting it, be a nice little loft but then when I get there I can take it off and use it as an outdoor table so we'll see if that comes into fruition on this next trip I think I mentioned uh, I would like to paint the ceiling and finish that off and uh, my, my aborted attempt at staining right here I'd like to paint that white just because it would brighten it up in here just a little bit help with the light uh, I have thought about doing a window not entirely sure where, if I would put that in the door or on the opposite side. Uh, windows are nice for light, but you give up a little bit of wall space for hanging stuff too, So, and then potentially introduces a leak. So, I haven't decided on the window quite yet. Um, sort of mentioned this before, but yeah, when we camp in this, it's usually just a, a queen-size air mattress in the back, or, or two different cots, or if I go out solo, I'll just bring one cot and then have a little walkway. So the back section is usually kind of the sleeping area. Then there's room up front for either a little bench, a little stool here in front of the television um, or a place to just, you know, have your clothes and get dressed. I like using the cots because you can put duffel bags underneath the cot and it's lots of extra storage. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to follow along with this build, go ahead and click subscribe. If you'd like to see any of the products that were used for this build, click the link below and anything that's still up on Amazon will have listed out there. Any questions or comments, shoot them below.